Hi, I'm Heidi Nance. I'm the Director of the Historical Medical Library here at the College of Physicians of Philadelphia. And I'm here today with a number of my colleagues to do a first look at some vaccination related materials. So I'll turn it over to... Hi, I am Raina Andrews. I'm the archivist here at the Historical Medical Library. Hi, I'm Dr. Deborah Wexler. I am the founder and former executive director of the Immunization Action Coalition. And hello, my name is Renee Nahid. I'm the editor of the History of Vaccines Project by the College of Physicians of Philadelphia. So these include Dr. Seuss characters. This one in particular is in English. And I thought this was such an amazing example of communication to both children and parents and a fun way to talk about how to get your vaccination. So it says, attention one and all, please lend me your ear. Immunization has changed, it's been quite a year. A new acellular pertussis vaccine combined with D and T. And it goes on with a bunch of rhyming in very Dr. Seuss-ish fashion. So Deborah, is there a little bit more information about this one? Well, just in terms of all of these Dr. Seuss posters, what I remember being able to pick these up at conferences. So I'd go to a lot of immunization conferences, the National Immunization Conference, you know, from the early 90s, but these came out in around 1997, I believe, and it was a collaboration between the Department of Health and Human Services, CDC, and the Dr. Seuss Foundation, and they created these posters because Dr. Seuss characters are so beloved. You know, these are designed for doctors who take care of kids, pediatricians, family docs, to go on their walls, to make kids more comfortable, to have a conversation about immunization. So you could pick these up at immunization conferences, which is what I did. I brought them home and put them in a big folder and just whenever I saw them, I'd just take some home. They were just out there. And of course, when you go to a conference and you see something cool like this, you just pick it up and take it home. And these six came in a tube rolled up that I think I got mailed to me. I signed up and the San Francisco Department of Health sent these to me. So they must have been sent to pediatricians and family docs on request hmm. or the health department. I don't know how they were distributed nationally, but a lot were. So they appear on the walls, you know, when I take mm. my kids to the doctor, sometimes I would see these. Mm. So it was very cool, very appealing, really colorful. And it would be characters that the children, you know, would be very familiar with and be very comforting and make the vaccination process very normalized for them. And this is at a time when the DTP vaccine was being associated with a lot of adverse reactions in children. And they changed the formulation of the pertussis to be what we call acellular, so it doesn't have the whole bacteria in there. Mm. And it changed to DTAP, what we call now the DTAP vaccine. So this was a way of telling parents, you know, that what you've heard in the news, what you've seen about DTP, we've changed it. It's now much more safer, less adverse reactions. And this is telling people that mm. this new combination of the acellular pertussis with D and T now will be DTAP instead of the mm. DTP. So it served multiple purposes, you know, comforting children, familiarizing and informing the parents. Mm -hmm. And so that actually speaks to this last line, which is, so as the old saying goes, prevention beats cure. These changes are for the better of that you can be sure. So it's sort of like hammering that home, prevention beats cure, preventative measures. That's yeah, what the vaccine and, and is, and these are changes for the better. Yeah, and a vaccine that was already safe, but people had some reaction to it, was it made even safer by this new formulation. And the interesting thing is they put an 800 number on there, you know, so that's something CDC actually had contract with a organization, a nonprofit that was trained to answer questions. I don't know if that really went to official CDC staffer, but I think there was a collaboration. I think they're called cooperative agreement with an organization that really did answer parents' questions. So I think it was maybe 800 and 232 is CDC and I can't remember what 2522 <laughs> was, but yep, that was trying to get parents to ask questions too if they had any. That's Great. just fascinating. It looks like this is from The Sneetches and Other Stories by Dr. Seuss. Okay. And then our next one here, oh, there's so many. I mm -hmm. won't have a chance to go through them all. So this one's about measles, mumps, and rubella. The images are from The King Stilts. And it's asking, what's going on here? What's wrong with this fella? Why isn't he protected against measles, mumps, and rubella? And it goes on. So this seems to be a reminder too to parents not to wait and not to delay. 
on getting immunizations. It has the same phone number at the end. So this was something else I imagine that you picked up at a conference and may have come with the other one? That came in the two with the other ones, and I'm sure I saw that at conferences. That's a little scary, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's a little yeah. blooming, too. It's a little terrifying. Interesting scare tactics, but also very, very informative. Yeah, so with the measles vaccine, if you get one dose, you're about 90% protected. If you get two doses, you're 99% protected. So this is reminding parents to get the two doses. Make sure that you're you know, getting to the highest level of protection. He missed his first dose at H1. This is true. It's time to catch up. It's the smartest thing to do. So make sure that you're caught up. Otherwise, even with one vaccine, you still have that 10% chance of getting it. Hmm. With two vaccines, with two doses, less than 1% chance of getting it. One of the best vaccines out there to prevent measles. And actually, to follow up on that, we had a measles epidemic in the United States, 1989 and 1990. And there were so many unvaccinated children. There were deaths. I think there were 120, 130 deaths in the United States. I mean, there were so many under immunized children, not because people were afraid of vaccinations. I think it was an access problem. And, you know, we didn't embrace vaccines back then as much as most of us do these days. So measles is a highly contagious disease. And it's so important, and we don't want to have another measles epidemic or measles outbreaks. You know, the public health gets immediately involved if there's a measles case and investigates and stops it in his tracks and, you know, does education as much as possible. So measles, I think, will always be a focus of public health, which is, I'm sure, why they wanted to have a special poster on measles for this campaign. Hmm. So I wonder, there are so many of those, I don't know if we'll have time to get to them all today, but I know there's one in particular, so should we skip ahead Let's again? Let's skip ahead to the one I want to be sure that we get. So this one I think is very significant because it is not in English, and Dr. Nehra, I'll let you speak to that if you would like to. <laughs> so this is also from Dr. Seuss, obviously, If I Ran the Zoo by Dr. Seuss. It's been a year and 15 months, and this is not going to rhyme, right, if, if translated from <laughs> Spanish, but it's been a year and 15 months from the day that they saw you being born to the day that the bird of the vaccine arrives in the morning. The bird says, wake up, happy birthday, champion. You got your first vaccine against rubella, mumps, and measles. So this same thing, same message from the other ones of like, get it early on on your first birthday. And then it says, during the same visit, if the opportunity is there, you'll get vaccinated against hepatitis B and chickenpox. And so those are the vaccines that the one-year-old should be getting. And then it says the, the childhood vaccines not only protect you against Kib, which is a form of meningitis, polio, which you know we don't see anymore in the US, and diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis, but the whole community as well. So this is showing the little community of the characters, right, all being <laughs> mm -hmm, protected yeah. together. Yeah, herd immunity. I love this one because, as I understand it, there actually isn't an English language version. So this is very specific. I believe there are three more posters in English that I haven't mm -hmm. sent to you yet okay. that I will. And I think that this one is one of them that you'll get in English. And this one, I have this one in English. And I believe it's this one. The Spanish translation is really different than the English poster. I think that the English version of this and the English version of that are pretty much similar messaging, but this one okay. is quite different. Yeah, this one is very technical, right? This one talks right. about going to get the vaccines and ask the nurse what is immunization. And the nurse says, good question, and goes on to talk about how the cells are activated with the immunization, how they remember, how they yeah. give out antibodies and protect you throughout life. And so it's step by step what you would see, for example, on history of vaccines, you would see how vaccines work but this is in a poster version and rhyming as well, which is hard to do when you're translating <laughs> something from one language to the other. Oh, that's fantastic. I wow. agree, Renee. This was very technical, very this technical. messaging. And, you know, I'm not sure, you know, that children would understand this or parents would even be that interested in it, frankly. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not as... Playful. It's, but it's the kind of rhyme that a medical student would memorize, right, to, <laughs> to answer the question of how vaccines work. And then here's a third one. This one looks a little bit more playful, less text. This also is from Yertle the Turtle. This is also from the Sneeches, and that's one, If I Ran the Zoo. So I'm just, I'm curious about the different Dr. Seuss books. It's just the, the illustrations and then they, you know. Similar information. Yeah, and this one is telling parents that the immunization recommendations, the calendar of immunization has changed. Have you heard about that? And if you have any questions, ask, because now your child will be getting different immunizations than they used to. 
interesting. And so in the interest of time, I'm just gonna slide these over very quickly to reveal one of my absolute favorites. The one that made me laugh so much. And this is obviously Star Wars characters. We have C-3PO and R2-D2 saying, parents of Earth, are your children fully immunized? Do your records show it? Call your doctor or health department to make sure, and may the force be with you. And this is from the U.S. Department of Health, Education, and Welfare from 1979, in collaboration with 20th Century Fox in 1977. My son has this poster in his apartment, <laughs> but it says Star Wars at the top. Oh, it's the exact same photo. In 1979, you know, Star Wars was so much everywhere that you know, making a poster like this, Parents of Earth, are your children fully immunized? I mean, this was very exciting. I don't even know how this was distributed. I think a friend gave me this. I think it was Dr. William Atkinson from CDC. And I don't know how CDC distributed these, but I'm really happy to have it. It's mm -hmm. a true collector's item. And this is a really nice copy. It, the colors are nice and bright. We are very happy. To have we are it. delighted to have it. <laughs> I can imagine this will be featured in a number of in-person exhibits mm -hmm. from time to time. So is there anything in particular going on with vaccinations at that particular point in time? So this is right after there was a big influenza outbreak for which a vaccine was created rather quickly. And uh, this happened in 1976, 77. The vaccine was given and it caused a lot of adverse reactions, more than expected. And so the vaccine was taken off the shelves. This is the late seventies and at that time, the trust in vaccination kind of dropped off, not only for adults, the, the flu vaccine mostly for adults. Public health started noticing that children were also dropping off in vaccination because of that event. It was a swine flu that hit Fort Dix in, in New Jersey, and the vaccine was created in anticipation of a pandemic. The pandemic didn't happen, but the vaccination just caused a little too many adverse events. And so this was part of the effort to get those children vaccinated again because parents had stopped vaccinating at the time. And there were many collaborations between the Department of Health and Human Services and many pop culture things at the time. There's also a picture out there of Elvis getting his polio vaccine. Benjamin Franklin wrote about mm -hmm. getting the smallpox virulation. So yeah, we see it all the time. It's just that now we have, you know, material from back then. It's just fantastic. I think what really drove immunization, this is 1979, there were mm -hmm. school laws back then, but not every state had the same requirements for vaccination. So a lot of times if there weren't school laws, you know, parents needed to be encouraged. And I believe they would have to pay for vaccines if they were uninsured, you know, that was a big problem. So, you know, parents would have to pay out of pocket for vaccines if they didn't have insurance because the vaccines for children program that supported children, the cost of vaccines didn't come into play until after the measles epidemic of 89-90, I think VFC started in 1992 or 1993. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this was a prequel. You know, this kind of campaign poster was what Renee was saying, getting people motivated to vaccinate their children. So it's... This is just an amazing poster. collection. And now I really want to find that one of Elvis to see if we can find a copy of that and maybe start a series of different pop culture um, publications or posters related to vaccination, vaccination related materials. You know, it's a major part of our collection and something we're trying to highlight more and more, especially with the history of vaccines collaboration within the college and with wonderful colleagues who have access to amazing materials like these posters. These are a public service. This is just amazing. Thank you both so much for sharing them with us. I'm really looking forward to seeing how we can incorporate them into programming and talking more about vaccination throughout a variety of places in the college, including the library and the museum and the history of vaccines and, and other places. So thank you all so much for joining us. We hope this was both informative and entertaining. And please check back for more videos on a variety of topics, possibly even Elvis. We'll see. <laughs> thank you.